Welcome to the program once again. Just to mention our Twitter handle is at KTN News. Do let us know what is happening around you. We'd also appreciate your feedback. We want to begin by crossing over to Tanzania where we have been keeping up to date with the Tanzanian elections and uh, they are currently going on with the vote count. And KTN's journal Namu joins us for uh, the very latest updates. Namu, what's the latest and how many uh, stations have they counted so far? 61 stations have been counted so far, uh, Ian. Uh, with, with respect to the rest of the election, about 203 constituencies left in this uh, election. 23% of the total amount of constituencies that are in this that were a part of this election, 264 in total. Now, with that, uh, John Magufuli from the 34 constituencies that were read earlier on, John Magufuli has about 768,018. And um, Edward Loasa has 512 and uh, <clears throat> 169, beg your pardon. Uh, I'll just go through some of the ones that we were able to record here from the 34. Um, for instance, uh, in South Pemba, the constituency is Chonga. Um, John Magufuli had 1,740 and Edward Loasa had 3,800. Um, this is indicative of what's been happening over the past uh, one day with the results that have been coming in. In the smaller constituencies like Pemba, um, Edward Loasa seeming to take uh, carry the day there. But in the larger constituencies, for instance here uh, from Mbea district, uh, constituency like Eleja, um, John Magufuli has 26,000. 368 to Edward Loas's 15,651. That's been by and large the trend in those constituencies and in those districts. Uh, still a bit of a lead, building up a bit of a lead, 25, 23% is not anything to shake a stick at with respect to an election. It could be a decider in this, but remember it's not a 50 plus one system here in, in uh, Tanzania. It is a first past the post system where the person with the most absolute majority of votes wins that election. So far, that person seems to be John Magufuli, but it is early days yet, um, Ian. The results are coming in quite slow. Uh, by when should we expect that they will announce the winner? Well, according to the National Elections Commission here, they have about three days to, uh, within which they will announce these results. So uh, counting yesterday, they've got about uh, 24 to 48 hours left before that three-day period expires. But of course, they, they'll probably extend that over uh, to Thursday if the results of different constituencies do not come in in time. Remember, there were places that hadn't finished voting as at yesterday, but those were few and far between. Uh, here in Tanzania. So we're hoping that by Wednesday evening this counting process uh, and this announcement will have concluded and we'll know for certain who the president of Tanzania will be at that stage. And hopefully after that, um, immediately after that announcement uh, by the National Elections Commission is made, um, j either John Magufuli or Edward Lowassa will be sworn in as an ex-president of Tanzania. So we're hoping that at least by Thursday that swearing in takes place. And, and Namo, yesterday we had um, uh, Edward Loasa and his team uh, just raising a few concerns about uh, instances of rigging and all. Uh, given the, uh, how the election and how uh, the law is there, uh, what happens should they want to contest this particular election uh, if their claims are indeed true that uh, some instances of rigging have been happening? And given that the National uh, Elections uh, Commission said whatever they, whoever they will announce will be final. Well, yes, constitutionally, you've, you've just said it. Uh, whoever the National Elections Commission announces as the winner is the winner and will stand as president. And this being uh, forming part of the controversy of that um, constitutional review process that was abandoned in April this year in Tanzania, those were some of the proposals that had been fronted um, in terms of being able to uh, give opposition uh, candidates leeway to come and challenge these kinds of results. These are things that are showing up now in the election observer um, preliminary reports that are being announced, um, a slew of them being announced today, uh, the AU, SADC, um, East African Community, as well as um, uh, there, there were two SADA commissions, I beg your pardon. In fact, I spoke to Yusuf Nzibo, an IABC commissioner, 
who is part of the East Africa Community Observer Missions, and they gave me uh, their preliminary reports and their preliminary findings. Well, one of those recommendations, some of the recommendations, speaks exactly to your question about challenging results and uh, the, the structuring of the NEC as well as the Zanzibari Electoral Commission, which are right now not um, independent. The president appoints members of the National Elections Commission currently under this current constitution. So for instance, um, the recommendation to the NEC and to the ZEC was to develop long-term capacity building strategies for the electoral administration personnel in order to promote effective and sustainable election management, meaning that they should be independent. Um, undertaking measures to improve accuracy of voters' registers, reviewing operational planning and logistics for elections, and undertaking measures to improve the conduct and monitoring of voter education. Voter education was something that Yusuf Nzibu spoke specifically to. But, about, um, but to your question, Ian, that is one of the areas in which the Constitution needs to be uh, reformed. And Yusuf Nzibu said that they're going to be making this recommendation again to Tanzania to go back, to return to the question of constitutional reform, especially for the question of elections. Now, we've been unable to reach our team in Zanzibar. Their earlier reports are indicating that uh, there are some chaos sighted within uh, the towns there. Do you ha have you heard anything about this? Well, as at uh, about an hour ago, the Zanzibari Electoral Commission was supposed to be announcing the winner of that election, the presidential um, election there in that semi-autonomous region of Tanzania. And there was quite a bit of tension there. I had spoken to Mohammed Ali, our correspondent there, who has been following what's been happening in Zanzibar. And he told me that there was a buildup of police, paramilitary uh, police, as well as the military there around the tallying center where the Zanzibari Elec Elections Commission was about to announce its results. He also told me about the tension that um, had fomented in, in various parts of Zanzibar because of the manner in which the election seems to have been handled, but more so from Malim Saif's allegation that he had won that election. Malim Saif is from the CUF, who, which is one of the parties under the Okawa coalition. That uh, said that he, he had won the election by 52% of the vote there, and asking, rather demanding, that the Zanzibari Elections Commission uh, declare him president, that uh, making it on into the news nationally as well. So we're still waiting to hear what exactly is going on now, especially after that announcement. Will they, the election have gone his way? If it doesn't, perhaps there might be something to look into there, Ian. And Namu, finally, before I let you go, you've covered elections now both in Kenya and Tanzania. Are there perhaps some lessons we can draw from Tanzanians' elections? Well, uh, I think a lot of the people that have been making comments about these elections from Kenya and from Uganda, some of the people who've been observing it, is the political culture that Tanzanians have here. A lot of the campaigns were focused on specific issues that Tanzanians have problems with or challenges with. And that's something that um, a lot of uh, people who've been observing, they say, needs to carry over into Kenya, into Uganda, where issues become the basis for political campaigns and not personality politics, as is the case by and large in Kenya, as well as by and large in Uganda. Um, those are some of the issues uh, about the overall um, political culture in Tanzania seems to have been able to mature over time, perhaps because CCM has held on to power for such a, a long time. And after the, the, the passing of uh, laws that allowed for multi-party democracy here, that seems to have carried over. But there are also are learning points that Tanzania can learn from Kenya, from other parts of Africa. One, of course, is the fact that their independent electoral and uh, the, the, the elections commission, beg your pardon, is not independent. It's still um, appointed by and large by the president. Its members are appointed by the president. This was a situation that we had in 2007 before passing of the new constitution. So either way, there are learning points, but by and large, the, the, the political culture is something that people have spoken about. One other thing that Yusuf Mzibo spoke about was a posting of the voters register at various polling stations three days 
before the election takes place. That's something that doesn't happen in Kenya and would serve to ease tensions and clarify issues on election day because people can go and check on their names before the election actually commences and be able to clarify any issues that they have, whether their names are missing from the voters' roll prior to that election taking place. So there are some logistical things that and some learning points that Kenya can borrow from uh, Tanzania and Zanzibar uh, here in these elections. Thank you very much, uh, John Alenamu, for that particular update. Remember, we are covering the Tanzania elections, which are currently happening, right? which uh, results are currently being compiled right now by the National Elections Commission. Our teams are there, and then we shall keep you updated on this uh, particular story. As of right now, at least 61 stations have uh, uh, submitted uh, their results and so far CCM's Ed uh, John Magufuli is, has taken an early lead. We shall keep you posted on that particular story.